Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Robinson back with you for Benchmark 8.2. We're covering the unit on how to buy cars and homes and all the costs that are associated with both of those large purchases. So as we think about the big idea for 8.2, we're trying to understand how, how and why do four wheels cost so much. And we'll look at some car information as we look at buying and leasing cars, as well as the information that's under, needed to be understood as we think about financing or leasing cars. The benchmark targets that we're looking through, understanding the benefits of both buying and leasing. We'll look at the main terms of auto loans and how they impact monthly payments. And then we're going to talk through the drive free method when I uh, am able to discuss this with you in class. And we'll look through the method of saving for and buying used cars as an alternative to buying and leasing brand new cars. So first off, we have buying and leasing cars. And Consumer Reports is a magazine and website that puts out a great piece of information um, regarding leasing versus buying, and they compare the two choices for us. So we're just going to look at this website instead of me talking through the slides. Um, <clears throat> it's obviously very important that many people think about a lot in terms of buying versus leasing. Buying would mean that you own the car or that you financed it so you could pay it off in the future. Leasing is that you would only own the car for maybe a three-year period of time, and then you'd uh, sell it back to the dealership. So let's scroll down here and talk through the difference between buying and leasing. You can see that buying is listed on the left and leasing is listed on the right. And we're going to talk through the different piece of, of uh, traits here as we go through. So when we're buying a car, you own the vehicle and you get to keep it as long as you want. When you lease the car, you don't own the vehicle at all. You get to use it, but you must return it at the end of the lease until you just, unless you decide to buy it after the lease is up. Uh, upfront cost for buying includes cash uh, price or a down payment. And the upfront cost for leasing include the first month's payment, a security deposit acquisition fee, a down payment, taxes, registration, you see all that. So once we're maybe done with the vehicle, you as a buyer will have to deal with the selling or trading in of your car when you decide you want a different one. When leasing, you return the vehicle at the end of the lease, pay any of the costs, and walk away. So there is a little bit less of a hassle if you uh, adhere to all the leasing requirements of the company. Mileage. Many of you might be aware of this, but if you own your car, you get to drive it as you choose. However, with leasing, you might only be able to drive 12 to 15,000 miles per year. And if you drive over that, say in the three years, 45,000 miles, you're going to be charged um, over the limit prices for going over those miles. So let's see what happens if we were to finance a car with a six-year loan or if we were going to lease a car for the three years. So we see that we have purchased a 2017 Mazda CX-5. So that's a, um, like an SUV type of car. And you can see that it's based on the price of $29,429. You've paid $2,000 cash at the start, and so that's going to determine the payments that you're going to make for the three-year lease. So if we were to purchase this car using a six-year loan, our monthly payment would be $416. Our monthly payment with our lease is $287. That looks like a great idea to just go ahead and lease everything, but you need to scroll down and keep uh, understanding this information. If we scroll down, we see that the down payment and the cash due at signing are equal, so those numbers don't necessarily uh, contribute. The interest rate that we're going to pay on a loan is going to be 2.9%. The interest that we're going to pay on the lease is 0.024%. So what we've paid after three years is listed here. If we own the car, we've paid $16,000. If we're leasing the car, we've only paid $12,000. 
After three years, when we return the lease, the value of the car has dropped from $29,000 to $16,000. We have paid $24,664 after six years having that leased car. We've paid $31,000 with a six-year loan. However, after leasing, we don't have a car to sell or trade in. We do, however, have a car to sell once we pay off the six-year loan. So you can take the six-year total paid minus the payment, uh, the potential payment price of almost $10,000, and you can see that we're going to spend less if we were to buy this car. Now, this does not necessarily mean that all situations are like this you definitely need to do your research in terms of understanding if it's best to buy or lease but understanding that you have different options is incredibly important let's take a look uh, at this quick video here you're looking for the car of your dreams should you buy or lease when you buy if you're not paying outright you get a loan to pay for that vehicle but when you lease, you pay for a portion of the vehicle's total value. And at the end of the term, you either return it or you pay off the remaining balance. Consumer Reports money editor Octavio Blanco has identified five different types of drivers. Which one are you? First up, the Road Warrior. You drive more than 15,000 miles a year. Octavio says as a marathon driver, you've got a clear choice. If you're trying to put tons of miles on your car, you're better off buying rather than leasing. Why? It's because most lease plans have mileage limits of between 10 and 15,000 miles per year. And if you go over that limit, you're going to have to pay a hefty fee. Now, on the other hand, if you buy your car outright, you don't have to keep track of the miles at all. Next, we have the freshmen. Young drivers with little or no credit history are going off to college or have student loans and are strapped for cash. If you fit this bill, then you might want to say yes to the lease. If you're new to the game, you might be better off leasing rather than buying. Why? It's because leases generally come with lower monthly payments. And that's great when you need to pay back your student loans or take care of other monthly bills. And don't forget, when you're at the dealership, you can negotiate a lease, just like you would negotiate the purchase of a new vehicle. Number three. The Early Adopter. One of the biggest perks of leasing a new vehicle is that you get to experience a new car every two to three years. Leasing is great if you want to be on the cutting edge of technology with the latest safety features and infotainment systems. It's also great if you want to experience the latest in electric car technology, where we're going to see big improvements in how far a car can go on a single charge. Then you have the Ding King. He or she plans on holding onto that car a long time. But expect a few bumps, bangs, and boo-boos along the way. If that's you, then you'll want to buy. Damage to your vehicle can be more stressful when you lease rather than when you own. That's because of the hefty fees involved. However, when you own, wear and tear on your vehicle could reduce its trade-in or resale value. And last but not least, the penny saver. If you're looking for the cheapest monthly payments right now, leasing is the way to go. Payments on a lease are usually less than when you buy because you're only paying for the depreciation of the vehicle during the term of the lease, plus taxes, fees, and interest. But that doesn't mean that you get a car for less because leasing can get you into an endless cycle of payments. When you buy a car, the payments eventually end. Whether you ultimately choose to buy or lease, be sure to read the fine print before signing and driving home in the car of your dreams. So pretty cool video there explaining the benefits of leasing as well as buying depending upon your personality and car driving habits. So just a couple more pieces of information here. As we think about taking out a loan for a car or a lease, we're going to have to understand the different terms associated with that. The annual percentage rate or APR is the amount you'll pay to borrow the money, including interest and fees. The higher the APR, the more you'll owe in return for the loan. Then we have the loan term. This is similar to the term of the housing payments that we talked about last. And usually this term is going to last three to six years. Keep in mind that the longer the term of your loan, the more likely to pay in interest. The monthly payment then is the amount you owe each month, and it's made up of the principal.